hello again. I suspect, given the way the days are, are rushing by, this will be the last of our little shorter series of Q&A sessions. Um, and in this case, the, the question is actually one. There was, there was a related one on the Roman calendar and Roman systems of dating, but I've just thought it's always struck me as an oddity. It's something we don't think about, that the month of December obviously means the 10th month, uh, November the 9th, October the 8th, September the 7th. And yet, in our calendar, December is the 12th month, the end of our year. And we accept that and we use it and we don't think about it. You know, we don't generally. How often does anybody wonder why, you know, you've got days named after Woden and Thor as our days of the week and this sort of thing. It, it's We simply forget about it. We just talk about, you know, we use them familiar um, and we don't wonder why. But I thought today was a chance to talk about the Roman calendar around the central question of why is December called the 12th month when it's actually, uh, sorry, why is December called the 10th month when it's actually the 12th month? Most ancient societies, particularly Greco-Roman ones, tend to start with calendars which originally are based on the lunar cycle. Now, if you look at the Greek world, every community had its own calendar. They start, they're similar in many respects, but they are, they, the year starts at a different time, the months have different names, the festivals are different, depending on the particular heritage of that. We probably know most about Athens and its system that had 12 months, again, based on the lunar cycle. They were of 29 to 30 days, which meant you had 354 days in a normal year. And then you'd add, um, a second second month in every four years and that would give you 384 days in that year to try and sort of balance things out so if you use the lunar cycle there's always a problem it doesn't quite sync up with the seasons of the solar year the solar year is more reliable but is rather more difficult to calculate so um, a lot of ancient cultures understand the moon and also then tend to progress onto the stars before they really appreciate the, the sun in part again it's a geographical thing of the amount of variation uh and the angle of the sun perhaps you know if civilizations had developed further north or further south they might have thought of things in a different way because there's there's more change to the length of the day so you have individual communities and this will last right the way through into the roman period when for instance um a lot of Greek communities of the Eastern Mediterranean decide in honor to the Emperor Augustus to start their year with his birthday, basically. So it's a way of doing, and we'll name one of the months after him and this sort of thing. But again, it's a little bit like the situation before the development of railways and longer distance travel needed more accurate timekeeping because you had to know that your train would start at the the time what the time was locally so you get the development of you know Greenwich Mean Time and beyond that and they start to be more precise recording once again because otherwise it really doesn't matter what you call the day the particular month that sort of thing if you're not having to coordinate with people from elsewhere so each community tends to do its own thing in the broader context of um measuring time, remembering events, this sort of thing. For the Greeks, you have the Olympic cycle, an Olympiad of four years, um, which you know, based around each Olympic Games, and you also have the, the Pythian Games and the other, the other two major festivals. We, we focus on the Olympics, but it's part of a broader cycle. So that's clearly how a lot of stuff is recorded and how people try and work out when something had actually happened. Um, within individual communities, there'll be different systems of dating each year. You have the, obviously the eponymous Archon at Athens who gives his name to the year. The Romans will have similar systems of longer term dating. So obviously the basic one is from the foundation of the city, uh, Burbe Condita, um, where you're counting on from the date set for when Romulus is supposed to have founded the city of Rome. Um, and that lasts for a very long time more immediately and probably more reliably particularly when you come into the later period the romans will use the two the names of the two consuls of the year um and that's especially the case obviously from the republic onwards and that lasts right the way through into the imperial system as well even that when um in most cases the two consuls of the year will not serve out their 12 months but will be replaced by replacement suffolk consuls to share the honor around for more people 
Nevertheless, the two men who start out the year, they give their name to the year officially, and that's how in many documents it would be recorded. Um, there will be other systems of dating within the Principate, whereby you'll date around the years of tribunician power of the emperor of the time. That often appears on coins, monuments, particularly ones associated with the emperor. So you've got several distances, different systems, um, depending on the context. You go to somewhere like Egypt and you'll see within the, the Ptolemaic tradition is continued, which in turn has drawn on the older Egyptian tradition of dating um, an event on the basis of number of years of reign of the Roman Emperor by this time before it's been um, Egyptian kings and queens. With, you have obviously the, the some years that are the last year of somebody and the first year of somebody else. Um, so there can be different ways of, depending on when the event occurs, when the emperor or the king dies. So that's the broader context of how they're measuring time, how they're um, perceiving this, and how they're dating things that have happened in the past. Uh, on the whole, you don't get people talking too much about the future and saying, well, we'd like to do this in, you know, governments today will say they've got a target to achieve this by 2030 or something like this. The Romans don't really work that way, uh, and they don't really have a system, you know, whilst you could in theory extend the days from the, found, or the years from the foundation of the city, they don't normally do that. So they tend to wait for something to happen before they record it and give allocate it a, a place in time, effectively. Now the Romans, like most people, their earliest calendar is based on the lunar cycle. It seems to be a little bit peculiar, though, at first, in that in the, the very distant past, they seem only to have 10 months. And these are the ones that end with December. So there seems to be a gap in the early part of the winter, the January, February, um, where you don't have months that actually get a name. And that's the sequence because, you know, we remember um, from September onwards being the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th month. But until Julius Caesar and Augustus had July and August named after them respectively, those were... Um, Quintilis and Sextilis, the fifth and the sixth months. That's how they were known. So the early months of the year are named after gods or festivals or cults, this sort of thing, but later on it's just numbers. So we can tell very clearly that it starts off with a 10 month cycle of 10 named months, um, and they seem to have just fiddled around for some reason with, with the winter. Probably before the fall of Rome's last kings, a 12 month system is is added to this so you get january february now january is named after janus the uh god of beginnings and endings the you know god represented with two faces one looking forward one looking backward that's the logical time for the year to begin that name seems to be most clearly associated with the end of one year beginning of the next uh, the problem with that is is that until the middle of the second century bc in 153 bc the consular year actually began in March, on the 1st of March. So one theory has developed that seems to make sense that maybe in the, the last period of the kings that that government was planning on introducing these 12 name months and did so and changing the, the cycle of the year so that um, it began in January. With the upheaval, the creation of the Republic, that doesn't happen and the traditional first month of the year which has always been march up until the creation of these two months that remains the start of the year that remains when the consuls um take office that the consuls were military leaders as well as civil leaders and the association with mars the war guard there may be an element of that reinforcing it this sense of well that, that makes sense that's a good time to do this sort of thing um, so it's logical for the year to begin then because you're coming towards spring. This is the campaigning season. We could go out and fight someone if we need to, whether to protect ourselves or to avenge perceived insults, whatever it might be. So it rather looks as if, there's, as I say, there's a sort of limbo for centuries because a plan change hasn't actually come into full effect. So what you have are 12 months and... Um, the number of days within them varies. So March, May, Quintilis, and what will become July, and October all have 30 days. Um, February has 28, and all the others have 29. So that gives you 355 days per year. 
so instead they would add um, adjust with reducing February to 23 or 24 days and adding an extra month of 27 and this was done about every four years or when they felt it was necessary again to balance up with the solar year of 365 days or 365 and a bit so they're fiddling around with this within the months you have the basic you know the they were named as you've got the um, the calends the first of the month, the knowns on the seventh, and then the ides either the thirteenth or the fifteenth. And days are numbered as before or after those within the Roman system. So you've got your individual names for and timings for days, and then the months of the year. Until 153, the consuls, as I say, take office on uh, 1st of March. 153, it's moved to uh, the 1st of January. The cycle of the tribunes of the plebs is always different. They take office on the 10th of December, and that doesn't change. Uh, so 10th until the next year when somebody else, another college of 10, takes office on the, the 10th of that year. And that seems to be to do with the, you know, the different political tradition, the fact that this is meant as a a magistracy to protect the people from abuse of power by um, magistrates and other senior ones. So it, it's it's different. So there are these little peculiarities that come along. So it is something that requires um, careful management. It won't. It isn't a system that you can simply let run and it will keep pace with the seasons all the time. So by the time Julius Caesar comes along and reforms it, it's about three months out of kilter with the natural seasons. It's also given a lot of opportunity, as have other calendar systems where you've had to fiddle around with it and add particular days or months, in that politically people can take advantage of this. So for instance, if you decide that this is going to be a year where you're going to add a month, then that actually will increase the term of office of the magistrates of that year. Because again, it occurs in the middle of that or early on. Um, and when you put that month, when it actually happens, um, this can influence availability of time for court cases, for instance. You know, you see this sort of manipulation in Cicero's letters, particularly the Verona orations. Um, people can try to d alter the time you've got for an election campaign, uh, for canvassing, for all of these sorts of things. And it's subject to um, a little bit of jiggery pokery when it comes to working out what's going on as well as being unreliable. So eventually we get to Caesar's system, which is introduced in 46 BC, and to allow this to start at the right time, then they add um, three months, for, sorry, they add more time to 40, uh, 46 BC, so it ends up having 445 days. So this is the system that we have, and again, the months become Januarius, um, after Janus, Februarius, February, Martius, March, Aprilis, probably after the Etruscan name for Aphrodite, Maius after Maya, uh, Junius after Juno, um, uh, for June obviously, and then Quintilis will become Julius after Caesar, and Sextilis will become um, Augustus uh, after Augustus and hence are July and August, and the others continue on 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. Um, one little quirk is that whereas we have the 29th of February as our extra day, the Romans would actually have two days called the 23rd of February every four years within their system. Um, that would obviously require a little bit of, of fiddling to make sure that you had the precise dates for anything, legal documents, payments, this sort of thing. But nevertheless, that was how they did it. They didn't have a 29th or equivalent of it. They, they, so they didn't move the, the canons, the knowns, the ides or anything like that. That's how it, it worked out. So that's the reason why we have months that are, have numbers that don't correspond to how the the calendar actually works today how it functions so but the romans were like this for a very very long time they had a 10th month that was actually their 12th in fact for most of their history even before julius caesar came along and created the system that with minor alterations just to readjust it is the the system we have today so anyway i thought we're in december we're coming to that end it, it's one of those things if you sort of mention it to people they're always a bit surprised because again most of us never bother to think of it even though we know you know 
dex is going to mean 10, isn't it? Um, Nove is going to mean 9. Uh, ox for 8 and, and so on. Um, so that's just a little bit of background, a little curiosity really about the Roman period. But it is useful for when we come to look at political events, military campaigning, understanding how the calendar actually works, how they measure time, how they perceive time, has a lot of ripple effects in terms of what's politically possible, what makes sense, what advantages to be gained in certain situations, and so on. So anyway, that's a little, that's answering the question of why is December called the 10th month when it's the 12th. Thanks for watching.